What's up guys? In this video, I wanted to cover the MCU's upcoming hero, Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi is certainly not one of Marvel's best known characters, but hopefully, after watching this video, you have a good sense of the character when his movie comes out in September. Before we start, I just want to say I do a lot of these MCU character breakdowns, so if you're new to the channel and you enjoy the MCU, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you always know who the newest Marvel character is. Alright, let's get into Shang-Chi. Now again, he's not one of the most known characters, but he has been around for a while. He was first introduced in 1973 in Special Marvel Edition number 15, and this was mostly Marvel just writing the popularity of Kung Fu. It started to become popular in the United States because of Bruce Lee. I'm going to guess that Shang-Chi is going to have a pretty similar origin story as, as he had in the comics. But the big change will be that so that Cheng Chi's father is actually the Mandarin instead of Fu Manchu, who he was in the comics. But we'll get into that later. But getting into Shang Chi's origins, he was born and raised nearly in complete isolation from the outside world, and this was done so by his father, Fu Manchu. And when Shang Chi was growing up, his father would basically tell him, "Hey, listen up! I'm the world's greatest superhero. I've saved the world more times than I can count. So show me some respect." So Shang Chi grows up believing that his dad is basically the entire Avengers team wrapped up in one person. However, Fu Manchu, as you may guess, is not a superhero, but in reality, he's a crime lord to a crime organization that we later find out is called the Five Weapons Society. And Fu Manchu is the supreme commander of that group but he's not only a villain he's a villain with genius level intelligence he's highly trained in martial arts and magic and thought to be immortal now Fu Manchu is in a sense immortal but he can be killed he used a spell to expand his life but that doesn't mean he can't be killed by normal means of being shot to death or anything like that Shang Chi dedicates his life to martial arts and education and when he becomes an adult his father kind of brings him into his group and sends him on his first mission. And this mission is to assassinate one of his oldest foes, Dr. Petri, who at the time is an old man. But Fu Manchu does not want him to die of natural causes, but he wants him to be killed to send a message to his other foes, which honestly for Shang-Chi should be a pretty huge red flag already that this dead might be a little bit on the shady side. But Shang-Chi says, nah, it'll be fine. And he sets off to murder Dr. Petri. And when he sneaks into his home and creeps up on his bed, he sees that Dr. Petri is basically already on his deathbed. He's a really old guy. And Shang-Chi starts to second guess himself. Killing an old man out of spite doesn't seem very superhero-ish, but he shrugs it off and karate chops him right in the neck, killing the old man. And as he's leaving, Dr. Petri's friend, Sir Dennis Nayland Smith, comes behind Shang-Chi with a gun. And he's an old man too in a wheelchair, but Shang-Chi notices that Dennis is very upset. So we ask him, why are you upset that this old evil man is dead? He was a bad guy. But Sir Dennis explains that Dr. Patrice was not an evil man. The evil one is actually Fu Manchu, your father. He's the leader of the crime organization. Dennis then goes into the story of how him and his now dead friend got involved with Fu Manchu. And it turns out that they're both secret agent partners for the British government. They were set on a mission to stop Fu Manchu and they were able to just barely squeak by, foiling one of his plans to take over the world. And Fu Manchu, someone who's always gonna hold a grudge, has been trying to enact his revenge ever since. And Shang Chi, after hearing his father, who just had him kill an old man in his sleep, is evil, is still shocked by what he hears, and he escapes from Dennis to go confirm this with his mother in New York City. And when he arrives in New York, he asks his mother if this is true. And she informs him that yes, your father in fact is a crime lord. She was only chosen by Fu Manchu because she had the best genetics to produce the most athletic and intelligent child. And his mother says this of course in shame because she basically has to admit to her son she only got with his dad because he had power. So after this, Shang-Chi leaves his gold digging mom to go confront his father, who already knows he's learned the truth about him. But when Shang-Chi gets to his father, his father tries to explain that, you know, I'm not evil. Yes, I wanted to take over the world, but not for those normal evil reasons. I only wanted to violently overthrow the world to bring peace to everyone, because it will all be ruled under me. And Shang-Chi finally ain't buying what his father's selling. And his father's obviously upset to hear this, but he chooses not to kill his son there and lets him leave unharmed. But he lets him know, for this time moving forward, you'll be seen as an enemy. It doesn't make a lot of sense because literally the very next issue, Fu Manchu forces Shang Chi's best friend to try to kill him. So I don't know why he even waited, just kill him right there. So now that Shang Chi's kinda on his own, he's then confronted again by Dennis Leyland Smith. And he asks Shang Chi to join MI6 to be part of his team to try to stop all of his father's evil plans. And his father's got a lot of plans for taking over the world. Most of them are really bad. Like he one time attempted to hit the moon out of orbit, cause mass chaos on Earth, so then he could easily take power. It didn't work. But Shang Chi spent some time with MI6. After a while, he eventually retires from his spy life. And from there, he captures around a few different superhero teams. Groups like 
Heroes for Hire. But after a while from not hearing from Fu Manchu, everyone kind of just assumes that he's dead. But this kind of leads up to Chang Chi's time helping the Secret Avengers. Now the Secret Avengers was a team of heroes led by Captain America following the Dark Reign comics, where S.H.I.E.L.D. is taken over by villains, and the normal Avengers team is disbanded. But Chang Chi's involvement with the Secret Avengers is pretty isolated because it was just one story, and Chang Chi was only involved because it was a group called the Shadow Council who was trying to resurrect his father. So obviously they got Shang Chi involved, but it's not until 2012 that Shang Chi officially joins the Avengers, and it's not really done in any special way. At the time, Captain America and Iron Man were trying to massively expand the membership of the Avengers roster, so they go around and they ask every hero if they'd like to join. And when he's on the Avengers, he's actually given a pair of nunchucks that was created by Tony Stark that can shoot repulsor rays. I don't think they'll make it in the movie, but it'd be pretty cool. Fortunately, even in comics, he's not able to keep these nunchucks for very long because after Secret Wars 2015, Marvel basically reset a lot of their characters and their teams. So Shang Chi is no longer on the Avengers. But in 2020, he gets his own series. And during this story, we see that the spirit of his father, who's now known as Zhang Zhu, chooses Shang Chi to take over his criminal organization and become the supreme commander of the Five Weapons Society. And in this story, we get a real dive into his family. And what we see is that Shang Chi He's got a lot of siblings, like nine brothers and sisters. And his sister, known as Sister Hammer, doesn't really respect the wishes of her father and believes that she should be the supreme commander. So to solidify her role, she decides to attempt to have Shang Chi assassinate him. Although during Shang Chi's journey to stop his sister, he learns this very Disney-like life lesson that he needs to embrace his family, the good and the bad, because it was a lack of family that caused his dad to turn evil in the first place. And during this story, Sister Hammer learns what a terrible person his father was, like that wasn't already obvious, and no longer wants to be associated with the organization. And at the end of the story, Shang Chi embraces his family's history and he takes on the role of Supreme Commander of the Five Weapons Society. But instead of using this organization as a way of evil, he intends to use it to help protect mankind. And that basically takes us up to where we are currently with Shang Chi's story. So with that, I'm gonna wrap up this video. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, make sure you slap that like button. If you wanna see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.